Uh, well, you guys work so closely with actors. Uh, what do you think is the most important aspect of that relationship? I mean, I, my, I, I'm sure everyone feels this way. You never want the actor to go to camera in something that they're absolutely not. They're, that you don't. You want to have the actor go to camera in something that they're completely at ease and they feel that they're inhabiting their character in. And no matter what you're doing, whether it's a period film or a fantasy or contemporary, I mean, you know, that's probably job number two. Job number one is that you make sure that the costume is telling, helping to tell the story and helping to tell the story of that character and tell the story of the script. Um, so you build a trust with the actors and you let them know that I got your back. Like, to me, that's one of the... Um, like I, I'm, I'm going to take, I t I'm taking this very seriously, and I'm not gonna, I'm gonna make sure that this is right. So I mean, that's how I feel. I feel like um, there's a trust that happens in the fitting room, that is really important. And uh, no, I, I totally think it's, it's I think it's about a collaboration as well because yeah. um, quite often on a production, we are the first person that the actor actually meets because we're, we're we have to get our job done and it's a longer lead time so we're kind of we become ambassadors for the project in that we are we are introducing the actor to the whole take on the the project and and so there's that part of it and there's also um i know people quite often ask you what happens if the actor doesn't like what you're putting them in and it and it never is that because it's a dialogue you know we can only help them to develop the character um, and I quite like it if they come in with very different ideas because it means uh, you're probably going to end up with with a completely different solution, which is better than anybody could have achieved on their own. I was just going to say, I think it's it's the honesty too. You know, I, I think when it comes down to it, just being, you know, making the decision. Sometimes they just want you to make the decision. You know, and it, it, well, what should it be? And rather than waffling back and forth and, and being honest and direct and saying, this is exactly why I feel this, you know, but you know, Alex and Mary Wright, it's just follow that suit. It's just, you know, having their back and, and protecting them and just saying, this, this is exactly what it, what's right. I think it's our job to help the actor find his character. And oftentimes an actor finds his character in the fitting room and They'll put something on that you thought might work, and I've had them like look in the mirror and maybe say a few of their lines, and you start a becoming starts happening, and then you you know you found them. We both found them, and from there, I give them shoes and I watch them walk away. <laughs> Uh, well, you just referenced this a minute ago, but uh, Jenny used to be Mary's assistant. So what, what kind of stories can you share about your time together? Uh, no, Jenny was a great, uh, great, great assistant costume designer, and she's a great, great costume designer now. And uh, I'm, a, I'm a great assistant costume designer. You know, I, it, you never leave that. I feel like I still don't ever leave that job. You know, I mean, unfortunately, sometimes it's, you know, if I have assistants working with me, you know, that, that's my job. I know, but I, I was, I felt like I was so good at that job. Um, yeah, but I definitely, you know, she hates when I say this, but this is, you know, exactly why I'm sitting where I'm sitting. What I learned, you know, all those many years. It was a definite school and couldn't have learned it. And I really appreciate it. I know you hate it. <laughs> um, what do you guys think is the biggest misconception about costume design? that your daughter or anybody you know who likes to go to the mall can do it. Mm. <laughs> I, I think also people think that we walk into the room with this amazing drawing as if we're some kind of creative genius and go, that's it, that's my vision. Um, for me, it's a very organic process. And and quite often at the end, if you look at what you've, what you've delivered, you go, I never thought I would do that on day one. Because you, you learn and you grow and you work with your team. Um, we don't do it on our own. We are supported by brilliant, talented, hardworking, loyal teams. So um, it's a journey. It's not. It's not a hole in one. Oh yeah, there are many times I think um, when you're heading down a direction, and and then one day you have a moment where you're like, "Wow, 
you know, that's never, like she said, where I was going to go, but it's also like you sort of click in, maybe not from the beginning. You may do all your research, and then maybe you start to see an actor start to perform, and, 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 and things change. Things evolve every day, especially on something contemporary. I know that you might be have all of those changes planned out, and then things change. They start to get into their character a little bit different. Things change on the set you know, when you're working. And you may start at the end, and then you go to the beginning, and then you go to the middle. So you really have to think about that. So it's not just all planned out. We go shopping. For me, you know, contemporary, get it all planned out, and then you walk away. We're there every day, you know, and, and changing and manipulating. And it, it, down to every single background, at least for me, you know, you take a look at every single person and the color of scarf they wear on the street 20 feet away has been chosen or looked at and considered. It's important. So I think that they think that we come in and maybe do the stars and that nothing else matters. And that, that isn't true. I think we, we do. Everything's important that's on that screen. That's what I mean. I would just say as an aside and a little off topic that for the first time in my career, Viggo Mortensen wanted to do his costume breakdown with oh, me. Nice. He wanted it all planned out. He wanted to know what he was going to wear when. He wanted to know what I had in mind. You know, after we got a couple of fitting, you know, after we had a direction, we had a closet for him. And um, it was amazing. We spent about three hours together really thinking it through. You noticed the gold with the gold and all that. But just he knew where he was going to be in every moment of that movie. Yeah. And um, he wanted to share that with me and be sure that, you know, it was all going to be good for both of us. He's an incredibly generous mm -hmm. yeah. and well-prepared actor. I had a similar experience with Ryan. He wanted the, we did, we plotted his whole costume mm -hmm. arc. And it's great. It's really, um, it was helpful for that film because there were a lot of civilian changes and we were shooting that part of the film really quickly. And for me, a lot of times I'll, I don't know about you guys, but you know, I try to start with the lead and designing and making sure that you know what the lead is sort of what their what their character arc is going to be and what they're actually going to wear in each change. And when you can, like it doesn't always work, but it, it did happen to work in on um on First Man. And then you kind of design the principles around them and then you design the background around them too. So mm -hmm. uh, it's that was very helpful. It was uh, was it. Did you find it helpful? I found it really helpful, and we did it with Ryan, and then we brought Damien into the loop, and and it was great. And then there was never any guessing games, and even the ads were like, "Thank you." Kid is like, "Can you bring change four to the set?" Like they were constantly dressing in the, you know, not back at base camp. So, um, what was your biggest fashion emergency on set? Well, when on Green Book. So we had a plantation scene, and all the men were in white dinner jackets, and the girls, sadly, didn't get to see many of them, but they were all in their sherbet-colored gowns and, you know, like back in the past. And Pete Fairley said to me about 7 o'clock in the morning, he goes, you know, my son goes to Tulane, because we were in New Orleans. I said, cool. He goes, well, you know, he and four of his friends are coming tonight to be in the plantation scene. And I told him, navy blazers and khaki pants, right? That's what we decided, right? And I was like... Oh dear, no, we decided white dinner jackets. I said, but don't worry, it's cool. Just give me a general idea of what size is, and show me a picture, do something. And he said, well, one's kind of pudgy and one's this, you know, and so I, then I went to the team and I said, okay, this is not a problem because you know, if we say it's not a problem, it's not a problem. Mm. If we freak out, then everybody on the team's gonna freak out. So I said, it's not a problem. Let's get some black pants together. Let's get the white jackets. We have extra. Let's get it all lined up here. And you know what? That was like the moment that Pete and I kind of bonded. I mean, we were thrilled with each other up until that point anyway. But when I said to him, it's no problem, he was like, thank you so much. And it was like the light went on. It's like, it's no problem. But it was kind of a fashion emergency, actually. <laughs> I have one from No Country. When I was assistant, I don't know if Mary even knows, but there was a little boy at the end, and he had a shirt, and I was helping aging one weekend, and I decided I was going to help age the shirt. Well, the shirt got wrapped inside the saw. or I mean, not the saw, but the, the sander, and it got wrapped in there, and I had to... Well, I ripped the shirt and beat the sander apart, you know, and, and ruined somebody's sander, completely tore it apart and figure, you know, figured out how am I going to get another one made. And, you know, so those disasters happen sometimes. I don't know if I ever told you or if you even knew about that. But no, like, I think, I, I think like, you told those me. kinds yeah. of things happen, you yeah. know, where 
you know, you try to help out and, and whether we were all aging and dying yeah. and doing no, something that and destroy happens. something. Um, Christine yeah. Mata set a pair of um, pants, on, pants fire. on fire on Oh Brother Where Art Thou. <laughs> you know, and you only have so many multiples and there goes a, <laughs> up in smoke, just like that. Like, so yeah, that, I guess that would be yeah. called a yeah. fashion emergency. I mean, that, that was a fire hazard. So We had that yeah. on um, uh, Golden Age. Uh, Samantha Morton's veil went up. Uh, Shaker put candles on the floor, which nobody knew oh. about. Oh my God. And her veil went up with flames Ooh. like here. On, on camera? No, in the oh. rehearsal. Holy I mean, shit. yeah, but you've only got one. Yeah. <laughs> and you almost set the actress on fire. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. That yeah. So lots of fire. Mm-hmm. So, okay. Um, how do you guys feel when you see fans dress up as characters you've designed for? It's great. Yeah, yeah it's really... I it's, think it's magnificent. It's like probably the best compliment you can get. Yeah. I've, when, and their inventiveness yeah. is yeah. amazing because they don't have our teams. They're doing it. And and, and sometimes it's, in, you know, it's amazing. The, does it surprise you anytime when it's like some obs- obscure costume from like a smaller movie that you don't expect? Oh, you mean like a ho- like I've had there's costumes that I've done that are Halloween costumes, mm-hmm. and then there is one one time though the I, I subtle ones that I don't expect. I don't know that I maybe not maybe I didn't even notice that it was a subtle one that they were trying to do. But uh, like the Big Lebowski is a big one. Um, but I remember the the biggest thrill for me was they did a concert for La La Land at the Hollywood Bowl where they fil- they screened the film and then the L.A. Philharmonic played the score. And as I was walking up to the per- to the screening and to the performance, there were like hundreds of people dressed as Emma's ca- Emma Stone's character and Ryan's character, and it was really heartwarming. And like they. It was so sweet, and like I was like, "Oh my god!" I got all teary eyed, and I was like, "Oh, I had to go pull myself together in the bathroom." But it was a really like, um, uh, lovely moment. I was like touched by people's, and like there was they hand painted the print on a yellow dress, and just like they were, and they did a really nice job. It was, it was kind of great. But there were like hundreds. It was crazy, like multiplicity. Yeah. Um, but anyway, that was kind of cool. Anyone else? We're not very good at dressing up in England. <laughs> We're far too restrained. They just Halloween doesn't doesn't take on the proportion that it does here. Right, right, yeah. I can't believe how fast it happens, though. <clears throat> Excuse me. You know, something will come out, and immediately they've. You know, I think I I've done a couple of things where <clears throat> patches are made. You know, and how do they get it done so quickly? You know, I know I know how we do. We have resources, but it's you know overnight, and it's really it's extraordinary. True fans. Yeah, right. Which thank God, otherwise we would be out of a job. (laughs) They're also very inventive. Like then when they tell you like how they come up with everything, and it's like oh, I just got all this stuff at like CVS or something, and it's like hand painted and yeah. Or now with social media, how quickly people can find you and ask you for where did you get you know this or that or you know how how did you make that leather coat? It's really and they'll dig deep Mm -hmm. to find you. It's interesting. Um, can you guys watch movies without paying attention to the costumes? <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 That's when I know it's a good film and a good costume, co- good, well, costume designed is that it sort of becomes, it's all one and it's doing so when what you, it When you be. notice it, then it's... When you notice it too much, sometimes it's... But they, even that sometimes is good. But like generally, like if you're, if you're looking too much at the clothes or the sets, then you're not paying attention to the story. And so... Uh, it's when it all adds up to an entity that you, you buy into the story and yeah. the world. It's when something is out of kilter that you start yes. analyzing, I think. All right, guys. Well, it was great speaking with all of you. Thank you so much for being here, and thank you very much for attending. Thanks for coming. Thank you.